In this second tutorial on dynamic documents, we'll delve into drag and drop authoring in a little more detail, and we're going to focus on the very versatile text field. So I've set up a pre-formatted document with all these different types of text fields that we're going to create and then see how they work on the signer side. So let's start by adding a plain text field to the document. I just click on it and drag it. Next, I'm going to add another text field, but this time with a date validation. So this means that the signer can only enter a date into this field. So to add the validation, I can either double click the field or right click it as I've just done and then choose edit. Then we come down here to the validation area, click on the drop down and choose date. Then from the date format drop down, choose the preferred format and then click save. So now let's add a text field with a social security number validation. We follow the same process. Add a text field, double click it, and under validation, choose social security number, and then click save. Now I'm going to add an email validated text field using the exact same method. Add the field, double click it, and choose email address for the validation. Now let's add another text field with a zip code validation but this time I'm also going to make it mandatory so the signer will be required to complete it. So I drag the field onto the document, double click it and choose the validation of US zip and then come here and check the required checkbox and then I click save. Now let's learn how to add a tooltip which acts as a little instructional text guiding the signer on how to complete a field. Add a text field, double click it, then here in tooltip, just type an instruction for the signer, whatever you want. Then click save. Finally, I'm going to add a signature field just so I can demonstrate how all mandatory fields are identified by this red border. So now I'm finished adding fields and I just want to show you a couple of tips on positioning them. To better align these three fields here, I just press and hold down the shift key on my keyboard and then using my mouse, select each of the fields. Then release the shift key, click on this down arrow here, and then click on the align left icon. And you can see that it nicely aligns these fields. If I want to make minor adjustments to a field, I can select it and then just use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move the fields around slightly. I can also make adjustments to the size of fields by clicking on the edge and dragging it. So now I'm going to send this document and see how these fields look on the signer side. So this is the document as it would appear to the signer. And I'm also going to bring up a copy of the document when it was in the drag and drop authoring environment so we can see how the fields have transferred over. Starting with this plain text field, this just allows me to free type into the field. The date validation requires the specified date format and it'll show a message if I don't conform to that format. The social security and email validated fields work in the same way. If I don't enter the appropriate format, a message pops up so that I can correct it. And this red asterisk indicates that the field is mandatory and the system won't allow me to complete the e-signing process until I've completed all mandatory fields. So I'll need to enter a zip code here. And now let's take a look at the tooltip that we created. It pops up when I click in the box to show the instruction or information about completing that field. Finally, I need to complete the second mandatory field, which is the signature, before I can complete the e-signing process. So a final tip before we finish up. In the previous tutorial, we learned that these white fields cannot be edited by the signer. They always autofill with system data. For example, this date field will default to today's date. So if you need to capture a name or email or date that requires that the signer manually enter their information, like a date of birth, for example, use a text field with the appropriate validation.